A warm welcome to everyone for our PC Quest 35 years journey from 1987 to 2022. Today, we will be discussing the story of Indian enterprise software. And for that, we have with us Tejas Goenka, Managing Director of Tally Solutions. Now, Tally Solutions also has completed 35 years and was founded uh, about a year before PC Quest. So congratulations to you too, Tejas. Thank you so much, Sunil, and thank you for having me, and congratulations for the 35 years. Yeah, great, great. So I'll, I'll, I'll get straight to it. You know, it's like uh, nine, you were launched in 86, we came in 87. That was a totally different era in those days. If initially, it was all about hardware. You know, the hardware uh, was expensive. Sometimes software would come free with the hardware. Then the focus shifted to software and personal software. But something that came a bit later was enterprise software or business software, what, whatever you call it. So can you speak uh, something about the advent of enterprise software in India? Sure, Sunil. Uh, that's a great question. And uh, just a disclaimer for both you and the audience. As you can see, I don't have much white hair. Um, I, I'm a 32-year-old uh, youngster. Um, yeah. So I can share uh, some part of it secondhand sure, and sure. some part of sure, it. Sure, sure. That works. So as you know, computing in general was driven from um, driven from the US, large, big computer rooms. Uh, people making certain uh, calculations uh, were the first sort of almost programs that would get kicked off. And uh, I think that, that like with most technology, um, you'll see a lot of first adopters as army, government, uh, people who can spend um, uh, using such uh, facilities. And when you come to uh, the consumer, consumers typically see almost the last because it has to be really cheap. It has to be foolproof. Um, all of those things need to be kind of taken into account. Now, if you look at the, the history in India, I would assume um, that a similar history in a sense followed suit. The larger enterprises, the government, the army would have been first adopters of computing uh, technology, software uh, to operate and applications to operate on this. Um, between the mid 80s to uh, uh, probably about the mid 90s, early 2000s, um, the hardware boom, like you said, is really what kind of kicked in. Um, in the beginning, like most people, we wouldn't know what to do with it. Branded PCs were not even a thing. Um, I remember my first computer was an assembled PC. The guy who used to serve us was, uh, uh, and we only had one because my dad used to love computers. No one else in my class had a, had a computer. Um, and, and that wave, I think, continued for some time, uh, the uh, getting enough parts, assembling, making a PC for a customer. I think that was really the, the core of the business. Um, enterprise software in a category similar to ours uh, probably played on two legs. Um, within India, I think a lot of our efforts were to use IP that was created elsewhere um, and then serve customers, some in India, some outside. Uh, I think that's bulk of what we're also known for today. And then there were smatterings of companies like ours that were born, um, where you would see uh, uh, individuals who came up programming almost in a sense in their garage, who thought that they could make Indianized versions of the product. In fact, my dad, when he before he started Tally, he had a, a small program that he made for Lotus 1, 2, 3, that instead of calculating the numbers in, in millions and billions, he would do it in lakhs and crores. Okay easier for the Indian business to kind of relate. So I think that's how we got started and, and you know, uh, uh, probably progressed. I don't know if that gives you an answer. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's so, that, that's quite interesting. I mean, that, like that Lotus one, two, three lakhs and crores. That's a quite an interesting anecdote of the, you know, improvisations we require. So I'd, I'd like to ask you then from, what about the story from there on? So how did the rise of software for businesses transform the Indian industry and the way it operated because again like as you mentioned personal computers and all that story has been told a lot but Absolutely. what about you know about the business software uh, you know transformation for indian industries in the 80s 90s sure so i think um in general if you see it worldwide and so it happened in india um there were several people who were interested in the in the application market obviously at that point most of the people who would buy it, customers did not know they needed to pay for software. So that was a separate journey, which we'll, which we'll cover soon. Right. Right. Uh, but makers were excited to create applications um, and especially for business users, because that's really where the PC was held. Uh, that's where the first uh, uh, set of use cases were. Um, and a company like ours that came in, we ended up becoming an almost coincidentally force 
push from my granddad, force capability of my dad to be able to make almost a full stack product made for India, made in India. Um, And that really is something that's spread, that you cannot use a computer without software. Uh, Most people who would sell computers, uh, our most famous product was Tally 4.5. Okay. Uh, that was the product that that kind of really took off. Um, every seller of a PC would have a booklet, if you recall in those days. And in Hindi, ki sa software chahiye aapko? Right? And Excel, Tally, kya kya chahiye? Uh, right, right. And I think that that's really what kind of pushed it. If you see domain-specific software like ours, that's been a large part of how the, the history has grown. Right. Um yeah, I think that's one bit. And then, of course, the second is that even till date, if you look, a lot of imported software, uh, I took a name of Excel, um, those are very commonly used and they come kind of pre-installed in the PC sometimes or sometimes, it, and a lot of it is still pirated. I mean, very honestly, uh, uh, people don't yet pay for it. But yeah, I think that's that's probably part of the history in the 80s and 90s. And also, you know, one thing which is well documented is like the large enterprises. They are always the first movers. But then there's another segment which like SMBs, like yeah. even PC Quest had a thrust on SMBs. In 2000s, we prided ourselves being masters of, you know, helping SMBs in IT implementation and right. also tally solutions. You have also <laughs> helped the SMBs. SMBs, in fact, have found a level playing field because they have exactly the same software as uh, you know the large enterprises so if right. you can speak something about the smb scene that would be interesting definitely the smb is a is a, a very unique uh, entity and world over it's a very unique entity um, in a country like india especially where we've had the most experience we found smb wants the service of an enterprise um, but wants it at the cost of a consumer and it's very, very difficult to solve uh, commercially for that for that uh, uh, customer. And the commercial has to be solved through technology only. So a lot of what insights we had in those days and many of the demonstrations that we used to do in India, I forget about those days. Till date in my house, I don't have consistent power. Um, and uh, UPSs were obviously a, a, not a thing at all. So how do you now make a database or how do you make a database oriented product that would survive in environments which were you know, filled with power fluctuation? How do you create a product that was uh, oriented towards those SMBs that could afford PCs? Um, uh, users that were uh, not yet familiar with anything to do with a PC, it was still DOS, there was no GUI. Um, and I think that a lot of our innovation kind of came, you know, at, at that ground level. So we used to go and demonstrate, in fact, that we made our own database, um, power safe, power resistant database. And it was made such that, as my granddad put it, that anybody in Tinsukhya should be able to operate it without ever calling me. Um, so he would go and the way he would demonstrate the product is that while the owner is entering, let's say a sales entry or a purchase voucher, he would go to the back of the desk after assisting them and they were continued to enter, he would just pull out the plug uh, of the computer. Um, and just to show that the environment that you need to build for is this uh, very fragile environment. And if you don't have something that's robust and resilient, very difficult for you to actually scale. So I think that was one big part. And then coming back, the commercials have always been a, a, a key debate point when it comes to SMBs that enterprises can afford multi-year contracts, large contracts, and you can afford to then put people behind it to service those contracts. Um, SMBs, on the other hand, are almost, I don't remember if it was a hero on I had or a Bajaj I had, it's almost a fill it, shut it, forget it. I uh, software, so I should be able to just leave it and it should just run. So I think creating a software for that, uh, uh, for that kind of a customer takes a different uh, intent, energy, and skill. Um, so yeah. So uh, and another thing I'd be interested is, you know, about Tally Solutions itself, because like 86, you have formed, it's been like, I think last 35 years have been exciting. 91 liberalization, 95, 96 internet, you know, uh, 99 Y2K crisis, smartphone, broadband, mobile broadband, even till now, demonetization, GST. It's one power packed uh, 35 years. So like what has been Tally Solutions role in accounting business solutions, even software for regional languages and up to the advent of the GST era? That's a great question, Sunil. So it's been a long, long time. I think in the last 35 years, uh, uh, we've been fortunate and blessed in a way to be able to serve uh, the business owner and entrepreneur community in the country. Um, We've 
somehow managed to ride through these changing times. The two big factors that have mattered to our business, I would say, is the change in landscape on technology. So when the internet came in the mid 90s, uh, when LAN was introduced into the country, um, that prompted a, a big change at our end. Right. Um, uh, mobility has come in and we've been trying to figure out how to get the mobility problem solved for the uh, for businessmen. Um, and that's actually our next big project, uh, connectivity, mobility, integrations. How can we do that much better for, for businesses? Um, and I think the second big angle that has affected us is uh, tax regime changes. Introduction of service tax, um, uh, changeover from sales tax to VAT, uh, then the unification of all of it to GST. They have just ended up uh, causing, um, I would say, inflection points in how we serve our customers. Um, and we've been, again, fortunate to keep pace. The core of it, I would say, has been has been really grounds up uh, building. Um, sometimes we've been tempted to, uh, 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 you know, we've seen so much heat in the market, we've been tempted to go and say, okay, this person is doing this, this person is doing this, maybe we should do it. But, uh, 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 but I think we've been fortunate to keep grounded in saying that, you know, if we do it, we must be best at it. Um, and it doesn't matter if you're first at it. And honestly, that's why we've, Kind of continue to be at that eighty percent share in the country, um, and and hope to see the, the the support for the next few years as well. Yeah, that that's great. So I I'll just end it with one final question. You know, like another problem with India is I guess in software we have been an underperformer. And in fact, I, I even I remember like I was going through old issues eighty nine ninety. There was a talk of Indian software underperforming, and like these are the top. 10 companies, most of them are not around. I mean, if you look at 86, there are very few software companies. So yeah. we have been underperforming. So, I mean, but I mean, uh, now, you know, the smartphone revolution, broadband startup revolution, we have upgraded ourselves during pandemic. So could, can you say, has Indian business software come of age? How will it fare on the global stage in the decades to come, or at least in the next five, six years? I'd be interested to know. Definitely. I think uh, that if you look fundamentally look at any software business, there are probably three or four things that will matter um, and for them to succeed. Um, businesses that started in the 80s and 90s, a lot of the work that they had to do was make almost everything in the software themselves um, in order for the application to just work. Uh, and that's been the core of our DNA. We end up doing a lot of the grunt work ourselves and it gives us a certain edge in the market. I think companies that were born slightly later take some kind of uh, solace and advantage in pre-created technologies that they can use in order to create the applications. Okay. So that's one leg that, that matters. The second leg I think that matters is uh, the environment. Um, I, I do think that you require talent, um, you require insight, you require support, funding, money. Um, you also require the government to support you. Um, one of the things, for example, uh, 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 that we do need to help the government in realizing is that we don't sell a software service. We sell a software right. product. Right. It's a tradable item. And unfortunately, many companies that will make tradable items even today suffer with this uh, uh, requirement to impose TDS on their customers. Now, that's not there on you know your pencils or your pens or anything mm -hmm. like that, which are also tradable items. So um, it causes... It uh, makes the company a little bit more wary because the rules and regulations aren't fully clear. And those are becoming better, I think, day by day. Okay. Of course, money has made a big difference. Um, because the money has been there, talent has started getting created. I think that's made a really big difference. I, uh, um, I do think the global exposure that many individuals today have in India because of media, because of their travel abroad, uh, I think that's certainly making a difference. Um, uh, so I, I think these factors do matter. If you're asking me, have they come of age? I think we're seeing superstars getting born. Um, uh, but I think that we are just at like this bare minimum 0.2% of the total potential. Um, and I think there's immense potential in the country. So uh, looking forward to seeing uh, what we can do to support, what you guys can do to support the ecosystem because the, the opportunity certainly is there. Yeah. So I'll, I'll just maybe finally add to that. I like that superstars in the making. So what do you think uh, will take us beyond, like from the government, from your point of view? Because I also feel we are at the cusp, but we have to do it this time. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think the government, the intent is very clear from the government side. I think that is, so we've got to help companies stay in India. I think that's going to be one big thing. Um, and regulation does need to support that. 
I think regulation does need to support product companies, not just services companies. And we need to see that these aren't employment generating companies, but immense wealth generating companies. And we've seen that from, from examples in, in, in the US. Um, I think that's one part. Uh, continuing to see VC interest, uh, uh, private equity interest, funding uh, coming in, I think that's great. I think for the first time in the last 30 years that I've been there, parents are excited to tell their kids, you know, uh, Asha, you are also doing a startup, uh, you know, um, and, and that matters. Uh, how much ever we say earlier, uh, it was a job, safety and security right. government job, then the safety and security of an IT job. Uh, and now it is the willingness and risk taking willingness to do this. I think the fourth is uh, the ecosystem does need to become a little bit mature, more mature. Uh, individuals like me have a tremendous responsibility to share insights. Uh, we've learned so much over the last 30, 35 years that if we share some of that, maybe younger kids can take that, uh, uh, take that up and, and use those insights to develop uh, um, you know, a large scale uh, uh, business as well. So uh, um, I think these are probably some of the ideas that come to mind, um, but very, very doable. Very, very doable. So anyway, thank you for uh, taking us down that journey, 35 years plus. And also it's great that we have ended on a note of optimism. So let's hope that in the you know years to come, India can dominate in the uh, enterprise software. Yeah. Absolutely, Sunil. Thank you so much. Thank for you so much. wish you guys the best for the next at least 35 years. Yeah, same to you. Thank <laughs> you. Take yeah. care. Yeah. Bye.